it's a pleasure to be here and uh, well i'm uh, enjoying now with you the volcanoes in 3D. I haven't seen it in 3D. Can you imagine? So it's also my first time. Uh, we share the same experience. Maybe I'm even more afraid than you to see it on such a big screen. Um, well, because sometimes if you climb into the volcanoes, you don't see what happened behind you or whatever. So <laughs> I, um, yeah, I can't wait to see this premiere or this pre-show. And I really wish you, um, well, uh, uh, a great experience close to volcanoes. Uh, the question was, was I ever hit by flying lava? Um, yes, I must admit, but uh, these were small particles, so they burned holes in my clothes, or so nothing, nothing really serious. Yeah. Um, so that that was what. I, so usually, you try to avoid, of course, to be hit. Um, so if you see, if you see a volcanic bomb. Uh, uh, well, approaching you, you try to kind of uh, uh, calculate the, the the trail and just step away, and the, the bomb is kind of uh, impacting next to you. That's the that's the trick. Okay, we have behind there a little girl. So the question was if I was ever too close to a volcano. Um, so this is the delicate um, way how you approach, you You have to be never too close. So you have to observe the volcano as soon as you are too close, it could be uh, too late for you. And um, I had some really dicey moments. Um, actually, it was in one incident, it was really good that I departed earlier. Uh, when the event happened, what I wanted to photograph, uh, when, it, when, it, when it would have happened in my presence, uh, I wouldn't stand here anymore. So the line is very, very thin. Yeah, please, in the red t-shirt, the little girl. What is my favorite part of watching a volcano? I mean, um, I don't know what the favorite part of this film was for you, but I love these explosions. I love if I see the incandescence of this uh, lava and um, how it cools down, also this creeping lava flow. So there, there are a lot of moments and there's always a surprise. Uh, volcanoes are living mountains, they are always reshaped, you can go there again and again and being surprised. So it's marvelous, I, I, I love volcanoes, yeah. Um, yeah, the gentleman up here. Um, the question was, um, it looked like that I'm very close to this uh, um, volcanic smog, or also called wok. Um, it's, it's very harmful to your lungs, um, actually. These are all sorts of acids, and uh, we have seen also burning methane. Uh, the question was, if it's dangerous, yes, it is dangerous, absolutely. And you have to kind of avoid it. I mean, sometimes you see me without a gas mask, sometimes you see me with a mask. Um, it's always um, better to wear it. Um, you try to avoid it because it's a breathing resistance from the apparatus, but actually it's very bad, even in low concentration, to, to inhale these gases and they might affect uh, uh, you in the long term, uh, definitely. I mean, you have to avoid them. There are, ooh, there are so many hands up. Uh, maybe the uh, little boy here in the red. Uh, uh, which, which type of science studies the volcanoes, lava, and magma? So the question was, what type of science is um, about um, yeah, volcanoes and lava? Usually it's a part of the geology. It's a volcanism. So if you want to study that, you should become a volcanologist. <laughs> we have another uh, little boy here. <laughs> no. 
why do volcanoes explode was the question. Um, well, inside the earth we have a lot of dissolved gases in, in, in the rock and the more the, the magma rises, uh, the less um, uh, pressure is and these gases are released. And it depends a little bit on the chemistry of the um, volcano if these gases are, um, well, suddenly released or if they are uh, slowly released. And so uh, that's, a, that's how the character is defined of the volcano. So either it's friendly or it's very explosive. Um, girl in the black t-shirt in the back. Um, the question was, how many shock waves uh, do you see? Um, it's it's uh, usually these shock waves are associated with uh, big explosions, and if you have very humid air, so the air is kind of compressed with the shock wave, and you have a condensation, and that is very fast. I mean, it's like a ball expanding in the in the uh, speed of of, um, of sound. And actually, when I saw it the first time, I was really shocked um, because you can't avoid it. And you, in the, in the, if you see it the first time, you don't know if you have to protect or what happens to you. But it's too fast. You, you can't do anything. And it's, it, nothing happens. It's, it's not really, I mean, it's very loud, of course, um, but it's a very strange effect. Um, the girl here. Oh, I didn't understand the rest. Um, how can I be so close uh, to the eruption without uh, ear protection? Um, yeah, um, I mean, it is very loud, but it's not that your eardrums would burst or so. I mean, probably, well, then you're probably too close. I don't know. I haven't experienced that yet. Yeah, please. What was, what was the scariest moment for you when you were near a volcano? What was my scariest moment at the volcano? Um, uh, one time, for example, I was on Etna volcano. Um, um, I was photographing a little cone, and that cone suddenly exploded without any announcement or whatever. So, so I was really surprised, and you have immediately projectiles against you, and that's a very dangerous situation. The gentleman down here. So the question was uh, mainly to the lava lake, uh, so how close could we approach to the lake and how big was the lake? Um, these are very wild lakes in, in, in Vanuatu with huge waves, they can um, be up to 30 meters. The diameter of the lake changes, it's, um, off, uh, in, in that moment it reduced a little bit, it was maybe only like 50, 60 meters. The biggest lava lake is in Niragongo, it's about 200 meters, very wide. Um, so that changes a little bit and um, that defines also how close you can go. It also uh, is important how the ventilation is in the crater uh, with the heat. I mean, you can't uh, stand the heat, the direct heat from the lava lake. It's a no-go. Uh, it's just too hot. It's about, uh, oh, I don't know the Fahrenheit, but it's about 1200 to 1300 uh, degrees Celsius, uh, maybe the double about in, in Fahrenheit. So it's really very hot. How many volcanoes have I been close to? I'm, uh, my problem is I don't count them and make uh, 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 a list or whatever. Um, actually, I don't know exactly. And, and the question is also, um, I, uh, for me, mostly the active volcanoes are interesting. I was also, of course, uh, uh, on a lot of dead volcanoes. So actually, I don't have a real count. Um, and, and often I revisit volcanoes. So for me, it's really the type and the uh, eruptions important. So it's always nice to come back and suddenly you, you, you can be surprised of a kind of a lame volcano you have seen one time. It can be uh, spectacular the other time. 
Gentleman in the grey shirt. Have I ever been burned? Yeah, we, we had that question uh, already uh, when I was hit with this smaller um, uh, lava parts which melted uh, through my uh, clothing. Um, yeah, that burned me a little bit. Um, yeah, I was I was already interested as a kid. Yeah, I was um, mesmerized by the images, and um, I always wanted to see a volcano. The first time I was 15 years old, when when I bugged my parents to go to Sicily, that was a not active volcano. It was Etna, but it was not in an active state. Um, but I was so impressed by by the caldera and I, uh, and how deep it is and how spectacular. So I always wanted to see an active volcano. And my first active volcano was Stromboli when I was 17. And we don't we didn't have any experience. We just went to the to the crater rim, which was completely stupid, <laughs> and waited for for an eruption. And 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 I was already obsessed with photography. We put the the cameras on the tripods and waited. And there was the explosion. And and everywhere was lava above us. We were just running and. Uh, we, we, we left our cameras, we didn't trigger, no one of us triggered, we just were running for our lives. So that was my first experience, I don't recommend to, 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 to repeat it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, go, go ahead. Um, how long was I inside the volcano? So that... Uh, uh, differed. I mean, I was in, in several volcanoes, so I have to be, well, I've been, well, uh, several days in some volcanoes, on some other volcanoes only, um, well, maybe two days, so over the night, uh, more or less. But there was this boy, I think, in the foreground who, yeah. Um, well, it's again about the shock waves. Uh, it, uh, um, these these shock waves are really big because they are expanding like a like a ball and and um, expanding. I, it it depends a little bit on the humidity of the air, how far you can see it. So, and and they just overtake you. You, know, you, you it's it's a more a visual effect than than you than you feel it or than than you experience it, but visually it's quite shocking. Um, so we have the last one, this uh, little uh, boy here in the front. Can you tell if a, a volcano is active? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's active. Yeah. 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 Um, actually, that's quite a, a good question. Um, uh, to me, it's always very important. Uh, which volcano do you choose? I mean, does it have a good activity, good enough activity to cover it and to make maybe make a long flight? I mean, there could be a media coverage and uh, these are maybe persons who, who are the first time on a volcano and are very excited, but it's kind of a minor eruption. So yeah, I have to learn how to judge it and, and, um, and when, when it is rewarding to go to a volcano. Thank you very much. <laughs>